Hey friends, it's Cherie, and in today's video, I'm going to be sharing with you what I sewed this week. But first, if you're new to my channel, welcome. And if you're a returning person, thank you so much for your continued support. All right, let's get into it. Friends, I was itching to make a couple of linen button-up tops, and let me tell you why. I was cleaning out my closet last weekend and trying to organize and get things together and I stumbled upon a linen shirt that I made last summer and never shared on my channel. I'm going to stand up. I'm wearing it right now. So this is the top. It is extremely cropped. This is a butterick pattern that I made and I actually shortened it. It's not supposed to be this short. But anyway, I loved wearing this last summer and I can't believe I forgot I even made it. So after pulling it out, I was like, you know what? I would really love to have a couple more linen button up tops. And in a recent video where I shared my five handmade essential items for summer, I did share that a button up top is one of my favorite things to wear during summer because I feel like it can really elevate an outfit. And I decided to revisit the Helen's Closet Gilbert top. I'm so glad I did. I believe that this is definitely going to be a tried and true for me moving forward because all three of the versions that I've made are lovely and I can't wait to share the details with you. Let's start by talking a little bit about the pattern. This is the Gilbert top pattern and as you can see there are two views here. I'm going to read the description so that you understand what the intent was for this pattern. The Gilbert top is a button up shirt with a camp style collar and a relaxed fit. View A has a short sleeve and a tie front. It is slightly cropped but still very comfortable with mid to high rise bottoms. View B has a long bell sleeve with a long length, perfect for tucking into high-waisted pants. And I love the idea of that. So the version that I made last summer, I made for my summer vacation sewing series that I put together with Talisha of Creativity by T. And in that version, I actually used a rayon chalet. And so it was very breezy and flowy and just very lightweight. And one of the things I did with that version is I made a size that was slightly too big. So for this version, I sized down and I also decided that rather than using a flowy fabric, I wanted to use something a bit more stable. So let's talk about what the fabric recommendations are for this pattern. The recommendations are medium weight wovens with no stretch such as linen, cotton, lawn, poplin, seersucker, double gauze, and shirting, silk noil, cotton linen blends, and cotton hemp blends. And view B, the one with the long sleeves, and that's a longer length, it is um, good for drapier fabrics with fluid movements such as tinsel twill, silk crepes, rayon viscose chalet, and poplin. So already did the rayon chalet. This time I decided I wanted to do a linen and I made both view A and view B. So with view A, I did use view B sleeves as you can see here because where I live, it's quite cold. It's been at the highest 60 degrees and it is July, okay? So while I want to wear all the summer things, it really just isn't warm enough for me to wear all the short sleeves and the shorts and everything. But I'm dreaming of summer, okay? So with this linen version, I actually made long sleeves for both of the versions that I made. And I stand by that decision. I will enjoy wearing it during the hot weather as well as this cooler weather that we're having right now. Let's talk about the size range for this pattern. This pattern comes in sizes zero all the way up to size 30. There are two different cup sizes for this pattern. There's the B cup and then there's the D cup. The unfortunate thing is that the B cup goes from size zero to 22. However, when it comes to the D cup, it only goes from size 12 to size 30. So people like myself, who is a size 10, cannot sew the D cup, which is a bummer because you guys know I love a pattern with cup sizes. And after making my versions, I can definitely see that I would have benefited from being able to make a size 10 with a D cup, which doesn't exist. So in future versions, I will do a full bust adjustment. Now, when I made my first top, I made a size 12 and it was too big in the shoulders. Um, it actually came here where the sleeve started and actually it should have been here. And that was a problem for me. It's still a very cute top. I still wear it a ton, but 
I sized down to a size 10 in order for it to fit my shoulders nicer. And fitting my shoulders nicer and the back and the body of the blouse fits so nice, I still have a bit of pulling here on the sides of my bust because I need a full bust adjustment or it would have been nice to have a size 10 D cup. So just to note. Now, I love this pattern because it only has seven pattern pieces and it has some really wonderful details in the instructions that give you a very professional looking top when you're completed with making it. I don't wanna to go too, too much into this pattern since I've already done a detailed pattern review on my channel, but I do wanna share with you the reasons why I love this version so much. So in a size 10, the bust darts were in the perfect location which was really great. I believe in the size 12, it was a little lower than um, it should have been for my last version. And as you can see, I still have the full bell sleeve on this guy and it is so flowy and nice and it just looks so great. Today's a very windy day when I took these pictures and so everything was blowing, my hair, my shirt, my, my skirt, everything, right? But I thought it looked so nice as the wind blew my sleeves. It's just such a really cool detail and there are no other patterns that I've seen that have this belled sleeve as far as for button up tops. I just think this is really special and unique. I also like the front tie here. Now I do want you to keep in mind that I am short waisted so I don't have a long torso. This is not really a cropped top on me. This stops a little below the waistband of my pants. So it does not show my belly. Even if I wore like pants that were at the natural waist, it still wouldn't show any skin for me unless I raise my arms. If I raise my arms, then you'd see a little skin, but it is not very cropped on me. It's actually the perfect length in my opinion for my body and my level of comfort. Now, one thing to know about this pattern is if you do view A, which has this cute little tie in the front, I really suggest that you make a facing piece, draft your own facing piece for the back of the ties because as you can see, without adding a facing, you see the fabric, the back side of the fabric on the ties. Now I've tied it in a clever way to where you actually can't see it and my little flaps point down and the wrong side of the fabric is facing my pants. So it's very cute. You can definitely manipulate your top in that way so that you can't see the underside of your fabric. However, for my first version that I made, I did draft a facing piece for this tie in order to be able to comfortably tie it and not worry about which side of the tie is showing. If you don't care about this little detail, then you know don't listen to me. But I do think that having the facing piece will definitely make it look a little better. This pattern is really great for people who don't love sewing on buttons because it only has three buttons that you have to sew on, which I think is really cool. And for my other version, because I had a really busy print fabric, I chose to omit this pocket on the chest, but this time around, since my print is um, not as busy and um, I just think that the flowers are spaced out enough to where a pocket wouldn't be completely lost in the print, I went ahead and added this pocket now, is it necessary? No, I don't think any button-up shirt, any shirt at all, needs to have chest pockets, in my opinion. On my body, I'm not using those pockets. They're decorative. I, <laughs> I mean, I'm never gonna stick anything in there. They're too tiny for a cell phone, and pretty much an inhaler and a cell phone is all I really wanna be putting in my pockets, and if I put an inhaler, it will be bulky. This is purely decorative. So, I definitely stand by my original decision to omit this pocket when I made my first version. I don't think that it adds anything or takes anything away from the blouse, um, but anytime I can eliminate a step in a sewing project, I am here for it because I can be done faster. I really love this top so much. It has a very nice, easy collar construction. There's a facing on this that is just comes together so very nice. You do use the burrito method when attaching your yokes to this blouse, which gives it a really nice clean finish. This fabric, along with the fabric that I used for the other version, is actually fabric that I got from my Indie Stitch subscription. I have to tell you, the fabrics that I have re received from that subscription have been so lovely, like really nice quality fabrics. 
And originally this was supposed to be used for a Friday Pattern Company square neck top. I fully intended to use it that way, but we just don't have summer yet. And for the square neck tops that I already have made, I always have to layer them up with cardigans or, you know, put an undershirt under it. And I'm not really feeling all the extra layers right now. I just want to be comfortable and having a long sleeve shirt, I know will just get more use out of my closet at this present time, as well as into the fall. And this linen is such a nice weight of linen. I wouldn't say that it is pant weight or bottom weight linen necessarily. Yes, you could make bottoms out of this. I think it is slightly lighter though in weight than I would use for our bottoms but it is heavier in weight than some of the linens that I've used for tops. It's completely opaque. I don't feel cold while wearing it, and I don't think that I'll feel hot while wearing it either. It just seems to be like a perfect weight. I love the color of this. It looks good with every shade of jeans that I pair it with, including the skirt that I took pictures in with this top. I actually paired it with a denim skirt that I made in this really wonderful yellow bull denim, or no, I keep saying bull denim. It's a Cone Mills denim that I purchased from LA Finch Fabric. And I actually had planned to pair this with jeans, but for some reason I snagged that skirt out of my closet and I'm so glad I did because I actually love the contrast of the colors. I think even though this is like a blue top with different shades of blue and I actually use gray buttons on it, because of the shades of these blue, I just feel like it goes with so many different things. And when I paired this with a denim on denim using a similar color denim, I didn't feel like it was as special or popped as much as when I paired it with my yellow skirt. Really love this blouse. So proud of the way it came out. Definitely looks like something I would have bought in the department stores and spent a pretty penny on. I'm really in love with this top, in love with the fabric. I can definitely see myself wearing this a lot. And I'm so happy that I chose what I chose. Now there is a tag on the inside. I've been trying to work really hard to remember to add clothing tags to my garments. Um, and so this time around, I actually did add it, but I forgot to add it to the yoke before I attached the yoke to the top. So I actually hand stitched it. I'm terrible at hand stitching. I definitely could use some practice with that but I hand stitched it on both versions. I used the same tag for both. And it just says, hello gorgeous. And I think it's a cute little tag. So it is a Kylie in the machine tag. So anyway, really love this version. Love the quality of the fabric. If you're interested in an indie stitch subscription, I highly recommend this subscription service because every single fabric that I've received, I've loved. And also the patterns that they include are really great. If you're interested, there'll be a link below for you to sign up with Indie Stitch. Let's talk about the other top that I made using Indie Stitch fabric again. This fabric was supposed to be used for a skirt, a button front skirt by Ellie and Mac. And when I washed this and actually got prepared to cut that skirt, I felt like it was gonna be too sheer. When this is held up in the sunlight, you can actually see through it a bit. Again, this is a bit of a heavier weight linen than I have purchased before um, and used for tops in the past. But I feel like for bottom, it's not quite heavy enough. It's not thick enough. It's not opaque enough. I felt like if I made that Elaine Mac button up skirt, I probably would have had to line it. Otherwise, you would have been able to see my underwear. And that's a no-go. I realized how soft this linen is how drapey it is, and I just knew that it would be best suited as a blouse rather than a bottoms. This is my personal opinion. If you are subscribed to Indie Stitch and you received the same linen and you did use it for the skirt, let me know how it turned out. Did you have to line it? Were you happy with the outcome? For me, I feel like choosing to make this top was the absolute best decision. What makes this version special is the buttons. Now originally I had planned to use the navy blue buttons that came in my Indie Stitch subscription box with this fabric. However, when I laid them on top of the, this blouse, they got lost. They're the exact same color as the fabric, so they completely got lost and it gave pajama vibes. As you can see, it's a simple, simple top when you do it in a solid color. So it definitely gave pajama vibes and that wasn't what I was going for. 
So I decided to use my special Pigeon Missions buttons, and these I believe are called the Kaleidoscope. I can't remember exactly, but they're really beautiful, beautiful buttons. And they added something special to this blouse. After wearing this, I have decided that I like it best tucked in, both with jeans and also with a denim skirt. And I took pictures wearing this with a denim skirt that is high-waisted. I love it so much. It actually looks like it's an upcycled pair of pants that have been turned into a skirt, but it's a Levi's skirt. I purchased it that way. I did not upcycle it myself. And it looks really nice together. Now, again, with this pocket on the front, even in a solid color, I just don't think it really adds anything to the top. I think removing it would have been just fine. I don't think that it needs it. Either way though, I can tell that making this blouse in a solid color with the long sleeves does give kind of pajama vibes, but if you don't care about that, go for it. It's such a lovely top, so comfortable to wear. Definitely more drapey than this version because this linen is thinner, lighter weight, a bit softer, but it's so beautiful and I feel like it looks very professional. And it's something that I definitely would have bought in a department store. I love it so much. The only telling thing that it is homemade or handmade um, by me is that I've added a tag that you wouldn't typically see in a clothing store. So I'm really proud of these and I do find that this is going to definitely be one of those patterns that I think about often. I have plans to make this in a white Frida fabric and for that, it will be short sleeve because it just would have to be, okay? I just, in my mind, I've already pictured it. It's gonna be short sleeve and it's gonna be great. So I will make this again. However, I will be doing a full bust adjustment so that I have more space and less pulling here at the bust, especially when using a tighter woven fabric. This linen is a bit tighter woven. It's not, it doesn't give as much. There's no stretch to it. But I do find with this linen, which I think is a linen blend, um, you can go back and watch my indie stitch unboxing videos so that you can see what uh, the percentage of viscose linen it is, but it is definitely a blend, which means that it has some give. And I think it's less noticeable that a size 10, you know, without a full bust adjustment is an issue. It actually pulls on the body really nicely. It looks great. So, Again, I paired this with the denim skirt and I paired this with the denim skirt, but I definitely plan on wearing both of them with jeans. And I just love the way they came out. I just think they're so gorgeous. And these buttons, you guys, look at these buttons. They're so cool, so cool. And the neat thing about the Pigeon Wishes buttons is that you buy them in a pack of 15, I believe. Yeah, I think it's 15. Now for view B, which is the long version, you're only using five buttons. So again, not a ton of buttons for this blouse. So if you hate sewing on buttons, but you definitely want a smart looking button up shirt, definitely consider this pattern. It's a really good pattern. The instructions are really lovely. I love the way they explain the burrito method in this pattern. It's just a really lovely pattern and I highly recommend it and I enjoyed sewing it. Let's talk about the next item that I made. And that is McCall M8057, and that's this is the pattern. I made view A, which is the shorts. This is my second time making this pattern. I'll insert pictures of both versions so that you can see, because I'm going to be talking about the differences between the two. I'm only going to share with you um, the version that I recently sewed this week. But we'll talk about how this pattern looks different in different fabrics. Now, for this, pair of pants, it really is so, so very easy. Um, if you've never made pants before, but you wanna give it a try, I do recommend this guy, but I do wanna share something. This requires three rows of elastic in the waistband, and it recommends 3 8 inch elastic. Now, if you're a person like me that doesn't love to be completely constrained by elastic, or you don't like tight, tight elastic on your waist, I recommend using a wider width of elastic. So maybe two inches of elastic would probably fit really nicely in this casing. And then just stitching 
two rows of stitches across that thick elastic to create the look of having three channels elastic rather than actually using three eighths inch elastic and pulling it through three channels in the waistband because I'll be honest with you, having those three rows of elastic, it is very constricting. And if you are a person that suffers from anything that causes you to bloat, this might be uncomfortable for you having that tightness on you. Now I decided to make a, a second version of these shorts because they're very quick, easy. So I want to say I made these in an hour, which is incredible. I wanted to make these again because I made a version last summer and it was fantastic. I wore it like crazy and it was a yellow linen fabric with white flowers all over it that I picked up at Joanne. Those are so cute. I wish I could find that fabric again because I would love to make a dress out of that fabric. But anyway, I loved it. However, I found that it was a bit puffy and I wondered in a drapey fabric if it would look different. Also, I had just enough fabric left over from the Mimi G dress that I made using this fabric last summer. And I thought this would be a perfect pair of shorts to use as a swimsuit cover up. That's how I plan to wear these. I think they're gonna be perfect for it, especially when I go on summer vacation. Um, it's not warm enough to wear these where I live right now. Maybe in September I'll be able to wear them here in Alameda or in the Bay Area. Um, but I definitely think that these are going to be the perfect swimsuit cover up. And this is a Rayon Chalet. It is a Mimi G print. And I believe that I bought this from fabricstore.com. I'm not sure if you can still buy this from Melanated Fabric. Um, you can take a look and see if they have it, but this is not a new print. I want to say it came out last year. This fabric is very drapey and soft and beautiful. Would make a lovely blouse, dress, pajamas. Um, really, really nice fabric. Soft and drapey. These shorts are cheeky. <laughs> they are pretty short. So if you don't like short shorts, you definitely want to add some length to them. But as a beginner pair of shorts, it is super, super easy. There's literally just three pattern pieces for this guy. You have a front leg, a back leg, and you have a pocket. The waistband folds down, and then you stitch the rows um, for the elastic channels right on top of that. So easy, fuss-free little project. If you don't like dealing with elastic, then it might be a challenge on your patients to feed the elastic through these channels, but honestly, that was the most time consuming part of creating these shorts. And I do like the way that they came out. I definitely will continue to use this pattern in the future for shorts because this is my second pair and I think they look really great. Now, as I mentioned with the linen version, it created kind of a puffy look in the front of the crotch area because it was linen and it was more structured, not drapey. For this version, I don't have that problem. Or if I do, it's definitely not noticeable. I'll insert pictures so that you can see what the finished version of these shorts looks like. But I think these are going to be a perfect swimsuit cover up this summer when I'm on vacation. Highly recommend this pattern. Um, I think the pants actually look really great. You can do a wide leg version or you can do a more tapered leg version. Super cute. You can look at other versions that other people have created on Instagram using the hashtag, hashtag Emily McCalls or hashtag M8057. And you'll be able to see what other people's versions look like. Now it does recommend using more of a drapier fabric. So it recommends chalets, crepe, gauze, and linen. And as you know, I've made it out of linen and I've made it out of rayon chalet. Really lovely. Those are the items that I made that I can share in this video. I did also make two other garments this week, so I'm actually really proud of myself. That's five garments in one week. Wow. Anyway, those other two garments I can't share with you in this video because they are for Elevate with Ankara. And if you have not been watching the series that I have with Talisha Creativity by T called Elevate with Ankara, I highly recommend that you check it out. In that series, we are encouraging people and inspiring people to use Ankara fabric, and we are giving you all kinds of inspiration. So check into our channels so that you can see the reveal of our next garment, which I think you're gonna like. So definitely check those videos out, and you'll be able to see the other things that I made in this week. 
I hope you have a fantastic day and a wonderful week. Take care of yourself and I will be talking to you real soon. Bye.